you've been driving this then? Going from the steps of Parliament House to <laughs> Bettle, the Mr. Bettles Electric. <laughs> the yeah. suburban desert of Brisbane. Yeah, the taking, it, um, taking it down the Gold Coast, the Ge Gecko, Gecko Environment Centre. At, um, what was it, Corumban? Calabudgera yeah. Creek, that's the one. They're a lively lot. They put, they put on a gig in their local playroom. And um, Wild Men, Surf Riders Association and for Forest Defenders. Surfies love trees too. Oh, you bet they do. Yeah. So where did these giant stumps come from? Oh, we pulled, pulled them out of, um, out of Wingham, Wingham Management Area, the Doyles River Forest, up near the catchment of the Tyrrell Creek. Well, they left behind as waste. Yeah, we, we chipped the waste, eh? No such thing, we leave them lying around to burn. That's these just, these just abandoned 800 year old Tullywoods. The, um, well, what sort of habitat are they? Powerful owls and yellow belly gliders. All the big birds need big trees, don't they? Yep. We get no birds yep. <laughs> in the little trees that are left. Yep. No, it's been a good, um, been a good trip. There's, um, after the Boral General Meeting down in Sydney, where there was some um, oh, right shenanigans in the meeting, and uh, that was well received by the people around the streets. There's, there's been, there's been hardly, a hardly a turn down. Eighty percent of people want an end to this, and we can tell you from the streets that that's exactly, you know, that's exactly what's happening. People all along. You don't have to explain it to seventy-five percent of them. They say yes, yep. sign. Yep. Where do money. I sign? What can I do? How can I make a difference? People have stopped saying, you know, they stop questioning their own power to change things. They're starting to believe that they can do something and that they will make a difference. And I think that, that the stumps are helping illustrate that, you know. People, people do want to make a change and uh, they want to be empowered to do it, you know. I was saying, to go on the question of wildlife, you know, I mean, I, I was travelling around the northeast of New South Wales 15 years ago, hitching about the place. And the bird life was just incredible. You'd see flock, yeah. flock, flocks of birds lift, lift lift up, lift lift up of colour. Yep. Yep. Nowadays, barely a living thing. You almost never see a carcass on the road even. No, no. And in the forest, these last, these last tiny patches of old growth, these last few couple of years worth of logging, yep. are the only places you find those endangered fauna. Yep. They're never in the regrowth. The regrowth's quiet as the tomb. Oh, what, a, it's what amazes quiet. me how, how big companies like Morrill can sponsor something like the Koala Foundation and, and be in there destroying the last of their habitat. That's the old, the old pea and thimble trick, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, I find that rather incredible. So you've been all over the country with this? Oh, it's a three-state tour now, I suppose. <laughs> yeah, I suppose if you call Canberra a separate state, I mean, it depends uh, what they're stating at the time. A little carbuncle on the business page. <laughs> Yeah, no, so a week great. in Canberra, three weeks pounding the streets, pounding the beat in Sydney, taking it to George Street outside the movies, probably a dozen times or more out the front of the pictures. People on the streets want to know the truth. They don't believe the corporate media, or they, you know, they know that, that that what they're being told in the papers and on the TV isn't the truth. They're aware of that, but they want to know what they can do. Yeah, people more sophisticated than, than the uh, newspapers give them credit for. Yeah, absolutely. They, they, they can smell it out. They know it's not right. They've been watching the David Attenboroughs over the years. Yeah. They've, they've been seeing yeah, the natural, all those natural environment get torn to pieces. Yeah. Yeah. No jobs on a wrecked planet, though. So, what we're doing, we've got the big Vote Green banner up the top of the truck there. We're trying to uh, trying to let people know that there is an alternative to the, the bad guys who've been voting for all these years. That they, you know, there, there is a party out there who want to, who want to sort of voice what they want want to be voiced. A party of people. A party people, of people. People yeah. that you can approach, people you can talk to, people that share your wishes for the world. Don't yeah, want to see the place wrecked. We want a real roots. sustainable... Yep. Grassroots democracy means that the people... Starts uh, at the grassroots. Yep. People uh, give the leaders, or the, the people, you know, empowered to do their work for them, the ability to do it. There hasn't been a party all the time on the road, and you've had to foot the bill for all of this yourselves, haven't you? Well, the, pe the people, people along the road. All we all we've got to do is let people know that we don't we take no we money for it. Mr. 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 Budget there takes his, take his a bucket, kick. Tell them what Borrell's doing to the forest. Telling them that their donations are going to help save their trees, and they want to do it. And they want to be part of it. There's a gold coin for it. Yeah, yeah. they'll hit their kicks. They want to do something. They want to act.
they're tired of being complacent. But you haven't just been in the cities either, you've been in a lot of rural logging areas with it too, eh? Well, we've had our share of confrontations, don't worry. There's the occasional yell and scream and arm waving, but for the most part, you know, there's the hot heads that won't, that won't wait around to, to hear sense, to hear your point of view, but even when we get, we get 50 or 60 mill workers come charging down the street with their fists in the air, you stop and talk and you keep, you keep a light heart, light heart about things. And there's half a dozen that stick around afterwards. They want to know. They know. For the most part, they can smell are, are, are good people. They're, they're just people they're doing people. a job. You know, they're, they're just us. They're just, they've just they been fed, fed and brainwashed and, and they believe that by us trying to save the last of our old growth areas that we're going to be putting them out of a job and starving their children. That's what, that's what the corporate media's been telling them for years. Of course they're The greenies concerned. starve them. Greenies cost them their jobs. You know, us greenies have been talking about saving them their jobs and planting trees so they'll have more jobs in years to come. So they can keep putting food in the mouths of their children. There are 800 wood chipping jobs. Oh Jesus, if you, if you got serious about plantations, there'd be 80,000 plantation jobs. Yep. And no yep. fewer jobs in, in ecotourism, if they leave some eco to tour, yeah. tour in. Yeah, it's yeah. Well, you've got to save some trees for the people to look at if they want to bring their uh, big Nikon cameras over here and take photos of big big trees and yeah. big things. And how will you sell cockatoos offshore if there aren't any breeding anywhere? Yeah, well, that's <laughs> <laughs> well, people People aren't, aren't being fooled anymore. Generalities, you, you, can't, you, can't, you can't just give, give them general... They warm, want to warm, know fuzzy facts, feelings. They want to know exactly how it is in the forest. Yeah. They need to know the species. They need to know the conditions. The consumers of all this pap have been really educated now. A decade or two of nature programs. They're really inquiring. Just where is our nature going? Yeah. Not everyone. Not solved. everyone can get to the forest to see the trees. That's why we've been taking the trees to the people on the streets to show them what's happening to their forest, to their their cultural heritage. You know, to the trees that belong to them. Where this, log where this logging went on, like would that have been inside of any tourist roads or anything else? Oh, it's a kilometre or two from, from the well, um, well trafficked Oxley Highway that most, most um, holiday tourists in New South Wales will know. You go along the Oxley from Port Macquarie into a little place called Stockyard Creek, Ginger's Creek. You turn south there for a kilometre or two and at 900 metres altitude on the south facing slopes You'll find these you be old Tallywood forests. You'll find very like few of them now. Left behind, yeah. This is like the surface of the moon where these come from now. And they're pulling these off slopes as well, not flat land. Oh, slopes too, too too steep to stand on. For the most part, the rain for, rainforest takes over takes over that and does a damn good job of protecting it from erosion. But um, these these stand stand like cathedrals down the spurs. Of course, until they're torn to pieces. But um, these are the these are the last refuges. The last places I know to go and hear powerful owls and yellow belly gliders. There are still a little patch of trees in the in the Dawes River area of this size, but they'd they'd be only a few dozen.